Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be on cryptography and uh, how in what are different ways I can use hash functions to provide authentication in my messages. Uh, so there are different scenarios that you can use to provide authentication using uh, hash functions. I already made a video on hash functions. What are some of the criteria of hash functions? What are different types of schemes in which we can generate hash functions? Uh, so let's just quickly look at it. So we're going to look at six different scenarios, uh, stating, uh, starting from this, 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 and going to the complex ones. All right. Uh, so the main purpose is to provide authentication. Uh, so for that reason, uh, let's say party A, let's call party A Alice and party B Bob. And let's say Bob wants to send a message. So let me just zoom in on it. <clears throat> let's say Alice wants to send a message to Bob so what she will do first she will take a message and she will, she will generate a hash function using whatever the hashing algorithm is uh, that normally is given uh, when we exchange messages using SSL security but just to give you an idea let's say okay, she calculated her hash functions that message the hash function of that message the hashed version of that message along with the original message is being concatenated together and the whole thing is encrypted using session key or a shared key between Alice and Bob. Let's call that K. The entire message is being encrypted using a, a key called K. Uh, this key can be, it has to be a symmetric key cryptography because both of these parties are sharing the same key. And it might be that Duffy Hellman is used to actually exchange that key. So keep that in mind that this key has to be a symmetric key cryptography. In our scenario, let's just take an example of AES. And the key exchanging method uh, that it might use, it might be Diffie-Hellman uh, key scheme, key exchange scheme. Upon receiving this message, Bob, what he will do, he will try to decrypt that message using the session key or the shared key, which is based on some symmetric key cryptography algorithm. Uh, he will look at this, the content of the message, and he will receive a message itself and the hash itself. So he will keep the hash on the other side while he'll take the message and he will calculate the hash functions using an agreed upon hashing scheme. Let's say SHA-256. So once he generate the hash, he will compare the hash message that was that he received from Alice and both of the hashes are compared. Once you compare both of the, those hashes, uh, if there is an ambiguity in the hash, uh, you will detect an ambiguity. If both of them are same, then you will, it's mean that the user has been authenticated. There is no integrity problem in the message. So that's the first idea. That's the basic idea regarding, regarding the first scheme. Now let's look at the second one, which is this. Let's say party A, which is Alice. Alice wants to send a message. Let's look at the first one so you can start making a comparison between this one and this one. Uh, not the entire message is being hashed now. No, not the whole thing is being hashed. Message plus hash, just like in the first scenario. In this, only the hash is being encrypted. So when you look at the message, it calculates a hash of that message. And only the, ha uh, the hashed is being encrypted using the session key or the shared key. Now this shared key. The hash, which is encrypted using shared key, is concatenated with an original message or which means appended with your message. It will be sent to Bob. Bob will, uh, Bob will open up this packet. He will see the message. He will start calculating the hash for that message. And he will use the session key in which both of those messages were encrypted. This He encrypted party A, which is Alice encrypted that message. Now, he will decrypt that message. And he will keep that message aside. Once he calculated the hash of this, both of them are compared. And he would look for ambiguity. If there is no ambiguity, we're good to go. If there is an ambiguity, then probably ask the sender to resend the message or the, the communication link has been compromised. Now, when you are only encrypting your hash function, we call that MAC, message authentication code. So basically what you're trying to do, you're trying to authenticate the message. At, as well, you are also sort of uh, authenticating uh, the user as well but most of the time is actually you're authenticating the message authenticating of the message basically means you're looking at the integrity does the integrity of my message has been compromised if hashes are not being matched then i know for sure the the big the the integrity of my message has been compromised uh once my message so 
I'll ask the sender to resend or I'll, I'll generate a new set of keys and things like that. So we call it message authentication uh, code uh, when I encrypt my hash function with a key, just the hash function, not the entire message in first scenario. Now, upon receiving this, Bob will look at the message. He will decrypt this using his key and start making comparison. No ambiguity found. We're good to go. So also it's known as keyed hash function, which means you have used your key to actually encrypt your hash function. Message authentication code, MAC, MAC, is also a general name. Also, sometimes books refer to as keyed hash function. Now, now the, let's look at the third scenario where party A wants, Alice wants to send a message exactly the same way. We're going to use this message. Uh, uh, we will calculate the hash of this message. We will encrypt that hash message now using A's private key. Now, instead of using symmetry key cryptography, now we're using RSA. Uh, or example of being an RSA or any asymmetric cryptography algorithm. Why? Because when encrypt this message with a private key, as we know, anything that is encrypted with public key would give me, you, I can decrypt that using private key and vice versa. Anything that is encrypted with private key, then it will be encrypted with public key. The reason to encrypt your hash function using a private key is to authenticate the user as well. To provide authentication of the user. Indeed, it is coming from A. Why? Because remember, uh, the, the, the key idea behind cryptography is to provide CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. When I'm looking for confidentiality, which means this message is dedicated only for this person, that's confidentiality. And normally we use public key to encrypt our messages and private key to decrypt our message because that message is specifically dedicated for that particular person. Now, when it comes to this, when you encrypt a message with private key, basically you're authenticating a user or a sender because the because now the public key which is being shared to everyone, everyone can use my public key. But the only, so once I encrypt a message with my private key, the only key that, that will decrypt that is going to be the public key of that person. So it's sort of in, in this way, you're also authenticating the user as well. Even though with hash function, you're also authenticating it. But this is make sure that indeed this message is coming from A's. Upon receiving this, um, party A, party B, Bob, or is going to decrypt, look at this packet, calculate the hash function, just like we've been previously doing it, encrypt this, uh, decrypt this message using A's public key, and then make a comparison. If there any ambiguity, then he will reject that. Or if everything is same, we're good to go. That's the idea regarding this. Now, when I look at this, look at this scenario on the other hand. We're providing confidentiality as well. In this scenario, scenario number four, we're also providing confidentiality as well. So let's just quickly look at it. Here, let's just quickly make a comparison between this and this. Everything is exactly the same, but once I concatenated this message, which means my hash function is encrypted using A's private key, Alice's private key, and this whole thing, the hash, which was encrypted using private key, is also gets encrypted, the whole packet will get encrypted using the session key using the session key or the shared key between my transmitter between Alice and Bob. Let's just quickly look at it, what I'm saying. All right, so let's look at it. So message, calculated hash, encrypted using A's private key, and this whole thing is encrypted. This whole thing, the message and the encrypted uh, hash function is encrypted using a session key which is being shared by both parties. Upon receiving this message, what B will do, B will take that message, decrypt that using the shared key, then he will look, he will generate a hash function based on the message itself, he will decrypt that using A's public key, which means Alice's public key, and make a comparison. If no ambiguity found, we're good to go. Now, let's look at this one, the fifth scenario exactly the same thing now we have a message now we're including something called a shared secret this shared secret is known to both of the parties they already know about that uh, think of it like a nonce all right nonce which is known by alice and bob both of them so this message and the nonce let's just call it the nonce or shared secret 
they both gets uh, used to calculate the hash function and message plus the hash is being concatenated together upon receiving this um, Bob will generate Bob will uh, uh, Bob will take that hash and keep it aside Bob will take the message and use the shared secret or nonce that they have used they have agreed upon or some integer value it could be any integer value and it will calculate the hash once he calculated the hash both of them are compared if no ambiguity found we're good to go now let's look at the sixth the last scenario in which we can use our our hash functions message of course your message plus your shared secret again both of them get uh, used to calculate my hash the entire packet now the the calculated hash with shared key and the message itself gets encrypted with your public key cryptography with K uh, using sorry uh, uh, symmetric key cryptography using let's say AES upon decrypting this message what Bob will found it he will look for that message he will take that shared key he will take that shared secret he will calculate an hash and will compare the hash that was sent if no ambiguity was found we're good to go so the idea regarding hash function is to provide message in integrity and authentication so we're going to look at that uh, in a in a scenario. We're going to look at that in a scenario. Uh, let's just try to capture a packet. I think I already made a video on it, but just let's just quickly look at it. Let me look at Google. Uh, let's go to Google and let's just uh, run my Wireshark. Let's just run Wireshark quickly. And uh, okay, so my Wireshark is running. Let's start my Wireshark. Now the next step is I'm going to go and visit a website. Let's just say I want to visit yahoo.com. All right, let's go to yahoo.com while my Wireshark is running. So I'm just going to show you what I meant to say. Now upon uh, this, all right, let's stop our, our, our packet capturing and let's just quickly look at a client hello. Let's just look at quickly look at client hello. All right, client hello, if I were to go to transport security, if I go further, if I look at my handshake protocol, if I were to look at it, I have 16 different cipher suit. So I said in most of the scenario, we saw a uh, symmetric key which is being used. What is the most popular symmetric key algorithm that we know? AES. So AES is mostly found in all of this, all of these cipher suit. One, two, three, four, five, six. So basically, it's a common denominator. AES being used. Now, we also use public key cryptography as well. So RSA can be found here. So one, two, three, four. Then we have RSA here, here, here. And also we use Diffie-Hellman to make a key exchange. So Diffie-Hellman is quite common too. And to provide message authentication code, the common denominator is some type of a secure hash algorithm. And secure hash algorithm in most of these cipher suit is SHA-256. Here we have SHA-384, 256, 256, 384, 256, 256, we have just only SHA-1, SHA-1, shoot 256, SHA-1, SHA-1. Now, when I look at my server hello, let's just try to find out my server hello. Out of these 16, one of them are being, uh, um, one of them get chosen. So out of this, one of them will get chosen. And here, if you can clearly see, I'm using Diffie-Hellman as a key exchange with AES and SHA-256. So this will give you a basic idea that how all of these three, all three of them gets combined together to, to, to provide you with message authentication. So that's the idea I wanted to show you. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the usage of uh, hash functions, uh, do let me know. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.